So welcome everyone to Sunday Poetry. And uh, today we're continuing with our exploration of, of haiku. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, to tell you that I, I, got a, I got a very nice note. You may have seen it on my YouTube channel. I got actually two notes um, from a, um, someone named Curtis Dunlap who, uh, who, whoa, hi, Scott. Um, <laughs> thanks for dropping by. I'm going to mute Scott because he's making I bad wish. noises. So I got, I got a note from Curtis Dunlap. Curtis runs something called the Haiku Foundation. And uh, he just dropped a note saying that, that he's seen uh, uh, our episodes and has shared them with, he said, with my haiku buddies, some of whom some of whose work is in the book. Wow. So, yeah, so that's really nice. So, uh, and he mentioned in a second note, specifically Alexis Rotella, who wrote some brilliant stuff here. I want to read some of her stuff today. Um, so, hello, Alexis. Hello, Curtis. Any of, <laughs> of y'all other uh, haiku knots out there, uh, really privileged to that you're, you're looking in on us. I hope that the stuff I say here is not too far off. Um, and um, be lovely. Maybe we can sometime get get some of you to make a, a guest appearance here. If, if uh, and if you all would be interested, you know, drop me a line, drop me a note on the channel or, or go to my website. Okay, so actually, let's dive right into one by Alexis Rotella. which is one of my, I just, I was trying to explain to someone the other day what haiku is, who, and I had had only a, a few moments to talk about it, who had n knew nothing about haiku. And this was one that I mentioned. Um, let me, let me read it to you. I'm going to read it to you before I give you the page number. Right? <laughs> I think I should always do, we should always do that so that you're really hearing and not being distracted by seeing the little uh, squiggles Twice. on the page. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'll read a couple of times. So, a butterfly lands on Park Place. A butterfly lands on Park Place. Okay. This is, yeah, it, this is, oh, actually I have a quick question. Someone that I read this, I think I read it to my wife. She didn't, she didn't get the joke. D do you all know what the Park Place reference is? What that refers to? New York, isn't it? Monopoly. That's what I thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the, in the game Monopoly, the, yeah, last, right. the, the last two properties on the board, the two most desirable expensive properties, the blue ones are um, Boardwalk and Park Place. Yeah, it's been just, a long time. Just before you get to go and, and go around the board again. So this is on page 175 in case you want to see it in front of you. But what I think so interesting about that is it could be New York. You know, they're 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 both kind of you know upper middle class, you know, yeah. socialistic, and here's this fragile butterfly. So yeah, yeah, that could that could be. I mean, it's just my assumption that it's it's the Monopoly game. Oh, uh, right. I mean, I don't I don't have any special commentary from Alexis Rotella, but maybe we'll get some. Uh, hi, Yehudit. Thank you for joining us. Um, so. Uh, one more time, a butterfly lands on Park Place. So, um, so see, if those of you are seeing this one on the page, you'll notice this is the first one we've had, which is not written in three lines. You know, and we've oh. talked and we've talked about the fact that modern haiku not always, but often jettison the old tradition of writing in 17 syllables for various reasons that I don't want to talk about again. If you want to hear about it, people watching this, go back to episode one, to Modern Haiku, the first episode. But um, 
the, a, a lot of the old um, uh, 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 um, conventions of the traditional Japanese haiku, such as 17 syllables, um, uh, set in what we think of as nature, the outdoors, always a clear designation of uh, what season it takes place in. A lot of that goes by the wayside often with uh, North American haiku, modern haiku in English. But usually they keep at least the three line structure. You know, there is something so deep about that structure of three. You know, three is always the magic number. It's always three blind mice, three bears, three little pigs. You know, <laughs> the, the king had three sons, and it's always the third son who's the, who's the, the you know, who's the, 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 the loser and winds up, you know, rescuing the princess and so forth. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it's... It's there everywhere in the arts. Um, you know, the symphony is written in sonata allegro form where you get the statement of the, of the theme, then the development, then the recapitulation. Every Hollywood movie is written, they never say act one, act two, act three, but they're always written with, the, with a three act structure uh, yeah. underlying it. So there's something ab about, you know, that, that three structure of three that's very, very fundamental. So. Throwing it away is kind of a big deal. Um, a butterfly lands on Park Place. Okay, so, all right, maybe it's actual Park Place in New York. Oh, no, 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 no. Monopoly is all set in Atlantic City, New Jersey. All those streets, all the streets on the Monopoly board are actual streets in Atlantic mm -hmm. City, New Jersey. If you go to Atlantic City, it's hilarious. You're seeing all those street names. You've known yeah. all your, right? Oh, there's, <laughs> in fact, there's a, there's a film out of the 80s, I think, with Jack Nicholson uh, called The King of Marvin Gardens. And it's set, <laughs> set in Atlantic City. So let's assume for the moment that this one is about a Monopoly board, Park Place on the Monopoly board. So, with that assumption, tell me, tell me what's going on here. How do you? What are you see? What are you seeing? What are you getting from this haiku? This is Scott. Hi, Scott. So, sorry for the big explosion of noise. That was the dog uh, leash. Yeah, um, it's always the dog. I have. Yeah, it's, a, I yeah, have it's it always the dog, Scott. The, and the dog ate my homework. <laughs> yeah, I have it set to always mute upon entering. But you're the only Zoom I attend that has a forced open mic, so I always forget. Oh, anyway, um, so I take it. I mean, as soon as you went at first, I was like, yeah, OK, I just wrote a haiku right now. The dog walked up the hill. Mm -hmm. Then I then as soon as you said what you did, I thought, oh, so just about to go around again, a eh? like a butterfly lives its life, then comes back in another form again mm -hmm. after the cocoon. And right. so Park Place being right there by just, going around just, again just, right right at the very end of the board of the circuit before you, you right so that's what i got away. from the little bit you've said okay cool cool that's fun anything else yeah judy i got the idea that they were outside playing the game uh-huh <laughs> yeah. because of the butterfly landing right Pro there. probably probably I mean, if a butterfly got inside the house, that's a pr pretty extraordinary. I guess it could happen, but that would be extraordinary. Uh, okay, so that's kind of an interesting, odd situation. You're playing Monopoly out, out of doors doesn't, usually it's more of an indoor thing, maybe a rainy day thing. Okay, what else? Well, I have the sense that the butterfly is something very fragile and very ephemeral. And Park Place is, in the Monopoly game, you know, it is the richest. It is the, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's meaty. And whether it's Park Place in Monopoly or Park Place in New York or, you know, mm -hmm. either way, it's something majestic and serious. Right. So that, you know, that dichotomy is, again, really potent. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, I just realized what, what we're all thinking of in New York City is Park Avenue. 
not uh, this place. That's the, the classy street in one of the classy streets in New York is Park Avenue. So, so I think we can pretty definitively say this is the Monopoly board, <laughs> unless it's in Atlantic City. Um, um, so yeah, the 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 butterfly is very delicate. It's it's as you say, it's ephemeral. It's beautiful. Park Place is. Um, you know, it's materialism, it's acquisition. It's for that matter. How many people here have ever played Monopoly? Have you all played Monopoly? Okay. A thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah. We used to, we used to play it. We used to play it when when my kids were growing up. We used to play it. And um I used to call it, I never called it Monopoly. I called it Capitalist Pig because, <laughs> because, because, you know, you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm the meditation teacher. I'm supposed to be, you know, the right, the man of peace and so forth. Soon as I start playing that game, I am become a killer. <laughs> I, be, I, 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 I just want to demolish everyone and I write and I take it very hard when I get demolished. I always, you know, I always want to get the, 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 the you know, I've got certain, I'm not even going to, I was about to tell you my secret strategies. What's the best <laughs> properties to get? I'm not going to tell you just in case I ever go up against you. I'm still that cutthroat. Right. And it, and, but the game tends to do that. It tends to bring that out in people. I, I don't think I'm the only one. Right, right. That, that we get very involved in the game. Now that's a ridiculous thing, right? the The money's not real, the prop, the deeds are not, the property's not real. But we'll we'll do anything. We'll fight tooth and nail to get our little, you know, hotel built on Marvin Gardens or Atlantic Avenue or Boardwalk or Park Place, whatever it is, and to you know not land. I mean, when you land on the other person's and you. Now you got to pay them rent and you're going to get bankrupted. It's horrible. It's the worst thing in the world. Right? So let's say we're in the mid middle of a monopoly game. We're engaged in this way. All our killer instincts are coming out. We're all going for each other's jugulars. We've all become capitalist pigs. Totally caught up in the game. Okay caught up in the game and then what happens a butterfly lands on park place right we're in the middle of all this noise and shouting at each other and bidding for properties and took to took and all of a sudden it's this silent thing that seems to me is going to completely interrupt our whole thing, our whole, suddenly there's this moment we've been completely caught up. You know, you get caught up in the game, it becomes your whole world. It becomes your whole reality. Mm -hmm. And suddenly here's this visitor from the heavens, this visitor of beauty, this visitor of delicacy, this, this, which lands. And when it lands, it doesn't make noise like Scott landing in, in our session here, Scott. I'm, I'm messing with you. It lands silently, right? So here's this silent moment that suddenly interrupts our being caught up in the game. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello, right? Okay, you know, this is, this is Samadhi. This is amazing grace. This is, we're caught up in the game. You know, we're, we get caught up in the, the game out here on this bigger board that we're so caught up in that we that this one becomes our whole reality. And if we're lucky, once in a while, unexplained, unearned, because grace cannot be earned, mm. right? No one can be good enough to earn grace. Really? And, and, and no one can be bad enough to not get grace. <laughs> I think I think all the religions uh, hopefully are agreed on that. Um, it's just it's be, it's beyond our control. It just you know it just randomly pff, there it is and everything everything stops and it's that moment of ah it's that moment of 
epiphany. And that silence made all the deeper by all the, the noise and the, and the engagement and the, the, the degree to which we were caught up and aggressive and all of that. All of a sudden, it's just, pfft. what the hell was that all about? Here's the real thing. Here's this little delicate, silent thing. Uh, yeah, really Ka good. yeah, Casey. I just find, find it really interesting that when when one is really caught up in that sort of that shielded capitalist tunnel vision, that mm -hmm. a butterfly is even um, available to be seen. You know, like right. <laughs> I think that's really wild. It's sort of like I don't know, very if he lands on your board game. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. You know, if we're caught up enough, we won't even see the butterfly when it lands. And that's how I would assume it would be if we were playing with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I'm surprised that. that I, I, I don't. Know. I, I kind of like to think. Well, actually, now here's a good point. Why might we be seeing Park Place if we're totally caught, assuming we're completely caught up? Some of our focus is going to be because we want to build a freaking hotel there. We want to, we, this is interesting. We want to set down our little three red houses and then, right, you pay some more, get rid of the houses, set down our green hotel. Or did I get that backwards? I haven't played, I haven't played in a while. Okay, so, so we want to set down a hotel. We want to set down our hotel on Park Place. And we have to, and, and we have to fight for it. Right, and we have to we have to earn it and all that. The butterfly can land anywhere it wants. The butterfly the butterfly doesn't have to you know buy a deed. The butterfly doesn't have to pay rent. Mm. Right, as the as the the title of that that Goldie Hawn film a million years ago said, butterflies are free. Right, butterfly. So here's this perfect freedom that completely cuts through all our usual rules and regulations about what's what and who gets to be where and so forth. Completely cuts through it. You know, I suspect for those of you f familiar with the uh, with the Gospels, um, there's a line that uh, line that Jesus says that's usually interpreted tragically, that maybe is not tragic at all, where he says, um, uh, foxes have their holes, birds have their nests, but the son of man hath nowhere to lay his head. Right, this idea of the, the vagabond homelessness of, of, of Jesus or of any prophet, right? Mm -hmm. And on, on that level, yeah, it's, and it's very beautiful, but maybe you know, it's it's actually what it's saying is there's nowhere that I'm I'm not stuck anywhere. You know, what I am, if I'm a Christ, if I'm a Buddha, if I'm, you know, a Shankara, you know, what I am is is transcendent. It's not stuck anywhere in time or place. There's there's mm -hmm. right. So you can see me. I can set down a park place. I can sit down on Mediterranean Avenue, anywhere I'm, 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 I'm free. I'm everywhere. I'm nowhere. Anything else on this one? This is great. Yeah. <laughs> man, oh man, it's great. It's great. And oh, let's, can, can you see, can, can you, you want to say something about the, the, just structurally, the, the fact of having the one line structure rather than the three line structure in, in this case. Because you can read this in three lines. You could read it, a butterfly <laughs> lands on Park Place. That's how I would, would split it. That works. So what's the, I mean, it's subtle, but what, what I, don't, I don't know if there's anything he, I can- he, he didn't. Yes. He didn't um, walk around a long time and choose it. Yeah. He went direct yeah. to Park Place. He went. He just went straight down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's somehow this the sense of the 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 tiny the infinitesimal momentariness of this. 
Maybe it works better in one line than in three. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Good. Um, oh, right. So here's a little, this is one we did last time the, uh, by Alexis Rotella, undressed today's roll dangles from a metal hanger. That's, that's hers as well. Okay, oh, we, had, we had a lot of, a lot of fun with that one. Okay, let's go. Uh, here's here's another one of hers. At the top of the Ferris wheel, lilac scent. Oh. At the top of the Ferris mm -hmm. wheel, lilac scent. Mm -hmm. It's on page 168, 168. Lilacs, yay. <laughs> Hi, Yaffa. <laughs> lilacs are... You are know, you, I love lilacs. Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, you getting, what are you getting from, from this poem besides lilacs or including lilacs? At the top of the Ferris wheel, lilac scent. Well, I guess just that nature is uh, all around us, no matter where we are, maybe. Yeah, that's not where we would expect to smell lilacs, is it? Right. <laughs> You know, walking through a garden, walking down the street, maybe someone's got them in their yard. Um, you know, I always recommend start with this haiku with a lot of things actually in literature is, you know, start with the, the concrete situation, right? Start with what's the, what's the, what's the situation on, on, on the ground as it were. And, you know, let's be clear about that. And, and then we can start extrapolating into the more far out stuff from there. So how the heck do we wind up smelling lilacs at the, not just on the Ferris wheel, at the top of the Ferris wheel? It's a well, bit of a would, mystery. Who would be at the top of a Ferris wheel? Who would be? At the top of a Ferris wheel. I mean, a Ferris wheel, you're either on the horses going around the ferris wheel oh oh lisa you can lisa you're can you're mixing up the ferris wheel with the merry-go-round okay the, the ferris wheel is 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 the vertical oh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank <laughs> you we'll, we'll, we'll get to the we'll get to the merry-go-round in a couple of minutes there's a merry-go-round one on the next yeah, yeah okay that's the one okay 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 we'll get through the ferris we'll get wheel. through the whole amusement park <laughs> Couldn't it be as simple as like, there's a person that has a bouquet of lilacs and they just stopped at the top of the Ferris wheel and they're smelling their lilacs? I will, I will continue what you're saying. The only thing that comes to me, because I heard those stories, that somebody is proposing a <laughs> wedding, uh, asking oh. somebody to get married and giving them flowers to mm -hmm. smell good. That's it. That's mm -hmm. really too simple. It's too simple. I'm trying to think what's beyond that. Right. It's it's probably it's probably too simple and and something else. It's probably too dramatic. It's too extraordinary. You know, you usually and this is a thing when you know, when I taught English, when I taught writing, I used to have to t tell this to my kids all the time if they were going to, you know, write a poetry or write a work of fiction because everyone wants to go almost everyone wants to go right away for the extraordinary. You know, when I, when I proposed marriage or when I fought the big battle, when I won the big game, right? And, and that's generally the worst place to find out about our lives and ourselves. Usually we'll do much better by looking at the ordinary and, mm -hmm. and, and the ordinary everyday moments and looking deeper into them. And, you know, it's, if it's the big, how I won the big game, that becomes... Uh, you know, we're just caught up in the flash and the drama of it, right? So we don't propose marriage or get have marriage proposed to us a lot of times in our life. So, so 
I would tend to, to rule that out. And Dean? Yes. Um, it's Cynthia. So we're in full on spring here in North Carolina. And I grew flowers, daffodils and tulips, which you don't normally think of as being hugely scented. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I were discussing it. She was visiting and, and we were commenting on the unbelievable scent of these flowers. And she said, I think it's just this week. I can smell them when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that first bloom, like when they're first blooming, it's, it's, and it's so short lived mm -hmm. that it's really kind of miraculous when you get to watch it, if you have the time to watch it, you know? Right. And I think when I first read it, I thought it's, it's, it's the beginning of spring and everything is so strong. It's all the way up to the top of the Ferris wheel. I mean, this, this, the scents are unbelievable. Yeah. That feels that, right. That feels right to me. Yeah. And, to me and too. also, it, and it feels right to me also, you know, we talked about how in, in the traditional Japanese haiku, there's always a season word, something that tells us what, and, and often in modern haiku, there isn't, but here it's come, it's come in silently. Not mm -hmm. only do we know it's springtime, we know it's early spring when there's that big lush, you know, bloom that, that you're talking about. Can you, can you see a similarity kind of in theme, a similarity in theme between this one and the a butterfly lands on Park Place. Yeah, the delicacy and the brevity of the moment. The delicacy and the brevity. And remember, we talked about this last time, how very often in, in haiku, there's a contrast. There's something very big and something very small or something very, you know, hot, something very cold, something, um, you know, there's the weightlifter and the teacup. Um, I've got another yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. That's totally. Mm -hmm. um, at the top of the Ferris wheel, mm -hmm. there's the scent of lavender. And what came to me because I'm a masseuse and I use essential oils, the poor lady <laughs> was scared to death and there was the scent of her perfume it's her uh-huh it's lilac like lilac yeah lilac yeah 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 maybe <laughs> maybe her her heart started pounding she flushed maybe that made her her the scent of her more. that's also essential possible. oil that's yeah. also possible so that so that that works also i mean another way this could work that i would connect back to the a butterfly lands on park place is that, okay, if you're at the top of the Ferris wheel, what's beneath you? Right. The whole amusement park, right? There's the Ferris wheel, there's the merry-go-round, there's the tilt-a-whirl, the there's, the, there's the, the, the hot dogs, the... and there's the, there's the, the haunted <laughs> house. All this, all this, much like the Monopoly board, the Monopoly game, all this stuff, all yeah. this stuff to be caught up Diversity. in. If you remember going to an amusement park or going to a carnival as a kid, you'd get put, you completely, it's designed for kids to get completely caught. All the colors are bright and the sounds are loud to get completely caught up, right? So, mm -hmm. so just as in the previous one, the, the Monopoly board was, I mean, to, you know, boil it down, the Monopoly board was Samsara and the butterfly landing was Nirvana, mm -hmm. right? Here, here we have the whole, perhaps unspoken, si silently implied, the whole amusement park way down there as some saw. And up here, here's this moment of nirvana. And again, when this one moment of the revelation of it, the, the lovely Japanese name for that is Kensho. Kensho, like a, oh, a glimpse, a glimpse. It's also, also this really interesting, like juxtaposition, like um, what someone was saying earlier that I don't, Remember that uh, the man-made versus the nature too, that you yes. have this kind of artificialness to the height of the, you know, you're at the top of the world, you know, tying in mm -hmm. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then you have this natural smell yeah. or essential oil smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, exactly because of what you're talking about, which is this, the, the, the proclivity in haiku to go for that kind of contrast, I would tend to interpret it as being natural 
lilac smell rather than someone's perfume or something. Yeah. Yep. So let's let's go to the merry-go-round. Sunset. Riding the merry-go-round alone. Sunset, riding the merry-go-round alone. It's on page, <laughs> page 169. Yeah, talk to me. Talk to me. Well, it, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of like a Joni Mitchell song. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just that, you, you know, it's, it's yes. either the end of you know, the end of one's life or the end of the day. And there's these recollections of the journey you've been through and it's a very deeply personal and yeah. And yeah. I love, I love. Com completely uh, kind of elog elegiac in, in, in this feeling. It's the kind of the melancholy, the end. We mentioned last week or the week before this Japanese term that's very important for haiku, yugen, Y-U-G-E-N, Y-U-G-E-N, the kind of wistful, wistful feeling that is very much um, kind of, in a funny way, prized, very important in haiku. And it's the reason why generally haiku favors autumn over spring, f f f favors sunset over sunrise. Mm. So yeah, this has got, this has got Yugen in spades. <laughs> I mean, you know, the merry-go-round, <laughs> you know, we, we think of being on there uh, with the other kids. We think of, we're, we're a kid. <laughs> we're on there with other kids. Um, you know, some are boldly going on the horsey that goes up and down as well as round and round. Some are more scared sitting on the little the little bench with, with their mom. Um, uh, but one way or another, we're there with, with, with other people with other kids and we're a kid here we seem to be most definitely not a kid and um and it ain't so merry is it you know it does she actually writes a lot about relationship which is very interesting you know again the traditional japanese haiku doesn't much go there uh, so to do that, to, to write about romance and, and sexuality and relationship and make it work in haiku terms is really very uh, rich. And in that context, to me, this one is, um, uh, you know, maybe more effective than, a, you know, than, than a, you know, you could be writing the whole last 75 pages of a, of a romance novel with the tragic breakup <laughs> and, and all that. And this, this accomplishes it maybe better in three short lines. I always used to tell my, my, my writing students, if you want to learn to write, if you're going to write anything, if you're going to write, if you're never going to write poetry again, if you're going to write nonfiction, if you're going to, if you're going to write medical reports, the best exercise is write haiku because everything is so under the microscope. You change one syllable and it throws the whole thing off or makes the whole thing suddenly work, suddenly pop. So the, I, can, I, I don't know of any better exercise for really getting super fine, fine-tuned in on, on your writing. It's like hypersensitive, right? Yeah. Getting getting hypersensitive, yeah. Dean, since you mentioned, maybe yeah. you want to stay with Alexis Rotella, but since you mentioned relationship, there was one that I found that just kind of like the one. Whoa. Okay. It was by Karen Sohn. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll read it and then tell yeah. you the mm -hmm. number. Okay. <laughs> The men on both sides have taken my armrests. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's perfect. Oh my God. Yeah, but okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. 
We've all been there. <laughs> it, it's so tangible and simple and visual and yet, you know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's visual. And more than that, well, you said it's tangible. We know what that feels like. We we are we we we're scrunched in there between these two guys who I'm seeing the both as pretty big guys. Yeah. They're they're man spreading. Yeah. Right? Are they? Um you know, if you can put us concretely enough into any situation, you're you're just about done. If you can put us concretely enough into any situation, the reality of it, you know, it becomes, is real enough that, you know, because all reality ultimately is made of, is made of nirvana. So we're gonna, we're, we're at least halfway there. One of my favorite examples of this, Huckleberry Finn, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. There's a scene very close to the beginning of the book where Huck, when Huck is still staying with the widow Douglas and having to wear starch clothes and go to school and all this. And he sneaks out at night to, to go on adventures with his, his buddy, Tom Sawyer. And suddenly they, 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 they have, they freeze in their tracks because Jim, the slave who later is going to run away and Huck and Jim are going to float down the Mississippi together on a raft. But for now, suddenly there's Jim and he is, uh, he's sitting right in the path where they have to go past and they don't want to be caught by Jim. So they're hiding there, hiding and, and, and not moving. And then Huck starts to itch in one spot. And I forget where he says, he, 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 and he says, and I was itching and I was itching, but I dasn't scratch. And then it itched over in this armpit and I dass and scratch, and then it itched inside my nose and, and behind me and the, under my feet. Right? I, I itched in 19 different places, but I dass and scratch. So you can feel that, you know what it's like to itch where you, you know, and you can't scratch. And what that does is it puts us inside his, tangibly, as you say, Lisa, inside his skin. Then the whole rest of the book, all his adventures he goes on down the Mississippi and all that, were in his skin. So to me, that, that haiku works much that way, right? In that, that, uh, that crowded airplane seat. Let's go, go, let's do another Alexis Rotella here. Um, there's a whole kind of series um of of you know what appears to be a romantic a sexual encounter um leading him in dot 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 my bracelet jangling leading him in, my bracelet jangling. This is on 171, if you want to see it. Salome in the Seven Veils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has the implication of a, you know, lady of the night or something, mm -hmm. but hard to say. Um, a lady of the night? As in a professional? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's leading him in, right? Yeah, leading. Mm -hmm. Right, and bracelet jangling. Yeah. I mean, that does come to mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. In context with the rest of, of 
the series, mm -hmm. it just seems more like seduction and she's taking him to bed. Yeah. But yeah. not, um, not soliciting, not, not, not soliciting. Yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause I was reading the late August, I bring him the garden in my skirt and then yeah. she goes from there. Yes. So. Yeah. Right. And then the next one, water lilies in a moment, he'll ask me what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. You hear that? No, do it yeah. again, please. Yes. Water, <laughs> water lilies in a moment, he'll ask me what I'm thinking. All right. Okay. So there's much more tuned inness than we'd probably expect in a professional relationship. All right. And by the way, what is she thinking? She's thinking he's going to ask me what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of the two, who's more tuned in? She is because she knows what he's thinking. She knows what he's going to ask. He's got to ask. And then the very interesting one after that, written in one line. In his wedding band, watching the clouds pass. Yeah, this is an affair. This, <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yep. 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 Okay. Oh, that didn't come okay. to me till now. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yep. In his wedding band, watching the clouds pass. Did, did, did anyone automatically assume, oh, that's his wedding band because the two of them are married? Did anyone assume that? Or did yeah, everyone, did or did everyone like me assume, no, he's married to someone else. This isn't a fair. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I was more naive, I guess. I. <laughs> Lisa, you, Lisa, you're just an old fashioned girl. Yeah. <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> yeah. C could be could be either way what's what's going on what is the haiku moment in in that one to me that one is particularly interesting in his wedding band watching the clouds pass it yeah. seems very moody it seems very moody to me like mm -hmm. a cloud that's gonna you know there's a thought coming something somber and then the clouds clear and mm -hmm. you know so if indeed he's it's an affair now mm -hmm. then there's always that kind of somber background of you know this is an affair it's not it's not real where so, where 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 are where are they well they have to be outside because there's they, clouds they got to be outside and and what's the weather like what, what's the lighting effect here well it's light and dark as the clouds go by it, it, it changed the right. It's light and light and dark as the clouds go by, but it's got to be sunny enough that we, can, you know, to get a a reflection of the of the of the sky in a mm -hmm. in a in a gold in wedding, wedding band. Thing. You you got to have some pretty pretty brilliant sunlight. So it could be summer. Could be, yeah. You know, because that's when the sun's going to be overhead and it's the brightest. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so, so this, this affair is unfolding in at this moment in the out of doors somewhere. Mm. This is, this is, this is the plot thickens. <laughs> this is interesting. But it is interesting watching, right? Where do you see it? Where do you see, we keep talking about contrast, contrasting elements? Where do you see a, this contrast in this one? Mom's one, I'm going to repeat the permanence of the ring as compared to the impermanence of the clouds. Yeah. I'll just translate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a very typical thing in wedding ceremonies. They often, you know, someone will talk about the wedding band and how it's, you know, because it's a circle, it's, e it's eternal. Um, but then here's the passing ephemeral thing. Here's, here's the clouds. 
So this idea of, you know, Lisa or someone said a few moments ago, it's, it's moody. There's, you know, we have the passing moods. Maybe we have passing attractions. Maybe we have passing, uh, you know, all that. But, but that the, there's something else that's, that's not passing. That's band. That's I'm sorry. The band. Yeah, that yeah, that the band that the band represents or embodies that which is not passing, which is supposed to be the marriage. <laughs> supposed to be the marriage. Um uh not always the case. Uh but you know particularly dipping into the, 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 the Buddhist background, the Buddhist context of, of haiku that's always there. You know, it's understood that everything is impermanent. Everything is impermanent. Everything is impermanent. You know, there's something in Buddhist teaching called the, um, the three marks of existence. Um, Dukkha, what is it? Dukkha, Anitya, and Anatta. Dukkha, Anitya, anitya and Anatta. Uh, dukkha is suffering. Problems happen. Shit happens. Um, anatta, let's go ahead. Anatta uh, is no self. There's no, you know, we think there's a solid, that there's a person at home here to experience all the dukkha, to experience the suffering. But the more we look inside, the more we find out, no, it's, it's, it's open space in here. You know, if I look for where's Dean, I can't find anyone. I just find this open space of awareness, um, which initially sounds scary to people, but it turns out, no, that's the, the really good news. Um, and then the third one, anitya impermanence impermanence right that that no no nothing is permanent no thing is permanent just f just before the buddha died the second to last thing the buddha said before he died was all compound things fall apart all, all everything that has been put together comes apart now what does that include that includes all things right you know, whether it's your favorite shirt, which will someday be a dust rag, um, uh, uh, your, you know, every relationship, every marriage ends in divorce or death, right? That's, that's you know, all, all meetings lead to partings. Everything, everything is impermanent. Um, and, um, you know, the only thing that is not impermanent is the, that which is not a thing, is the anatta. The, the not self, which is the experiencer of it all. And, um, and in Buddhism, they say any teaching that has those three marks is, is a valid teaching. If it doesn't have those three marks from a Buddhist point of view, eh, maybe you want to look at that again. This was really beautiful how you explained it. Because in the, in the first time I said, I don't mm -hmm. get it. No. But then, then the wedding band is a real we think it's a permanent it's metal whatever mm -hmm. it's made of and it's the opposite of the cloud passing by but now that you really we, we think mm -hmm. deeply into that even the wedding band is not permanent it's just yeah. it's going to be tossed away and gone and really yeah. beautifully explaining thank you yeah. this oh, thank you yeah yeah and, but but and you know thank you thank you alexis rotella and all these other wonderful poets here, because you know the stuff that's really good, you just it just has layer under layer under layer under layer, right? You know that the 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 one layer. Okay, here's the impermanence of the moods, the clouds, and the permanence of the wedding band, that works. But then you know here's this deeper level, what you know we might call irony in a sense, and then you know who what deeper levels. Are there beneath that that we haven't discovered yet? Tune in next time. Well, I think it gives the really this 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 sense of of like acknowledging that that um, that we should cherish the moment now. We should cherish what is now because yeah. it's 
maybe that's why in the Jewish uh, weddings you break a glass. It's we build a house, but it can break apart. Yeah. Uh, so we need to remember that even, yeah, to to enjoy what is now and and uh, it's it's really it's in a way it gives um, to really to understand that uh, it's not about creating fear or being afraid or anything, but really to enjoy and and really celebrate yeah. that whatever we have now. I mean, yeah. like look during the pandemic, whatever we have now. I yeah. talk. I woke my husband this morning on the beach in Santa Monica, and we said, "Wow." We are so lucky living in this environment that we can be in the outdoors and see the sky and see yeah. there were so many air, airplanes flying, but they created this white thing and they were crossing each other and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's really cherishing and enjoying the now. Yeah. I mean, hoping for tomorrow, but enjoying the now. If we, if we get anything from haiku, it's that. It's getting the, the, wow. the getting the gift of the now um, because, you know, it, that's all there is. Wonderful Buddhist teacher of ours, Charles Genou, I remember him once saying, there's nothing special about the present moment except that it's all we have. You know, it's, it's all we have. And so, yes, as you say, the celebrating, you know, you can see back there over my left shoulder, directly over my left shoulder in the back, is a little representation of Lord Shiva, who is the in the in the Vedic, the Hindu tradition, the Lord of of, they say, destruction. Dissolution would be a better word. You know, that everything goes away. Everything is impermanent. Everything dissolves. He's surrounded by flames. It's like the flames of of destruction. And what he's doing is he's dancing. In the middle, and in fact, that that particular one, he's in a he's he's doing this kind of break dancing where he's on one hand and his his legs are going straight up in the air, and so you know what knowing that all of this is flames, it's all on fire, it's all sometimes fast, sometimes slowly, it's all be there's there's something we're we're going to end in a second here, but the but the Buddha one of his his famous sermons is known as the fire sermon where he says, everything is fire. Everything is fire. You know, and, and, you know, we can spend a lot of time contemplating that. What does it mean that everything is, is fire? You know, on one level, it's, wow, he was anticipating E equals MC squared. You know, everything that seems so solid is really made out of energy, fiery energy, so to speak. Um, and, but also that everything is, is being nothing is is permanent and solid everything is being consumed and and uh, you know and and all, and all the great traditions such as you know where we get lord shiva there all of them tell us and and therefore what therefore dance <laughs> however you do it however you do it how many of you have ever seen we're going to end now how many of you've ever seen the film zorba the greek Okay. Long time now. Long okay. time. Okay. Okay. It, it, you, you must go rewatch <laughs> since most of you haven't seen it in a long time and you've done a lot of meditating and a lot of digesting of, of enlightenment teaching. Uh, highly, high, partly because it's just one of, it's on my top 10 list of just best <laughs> favorite films ever. Um, um, <laughs> Yath is looking skeptical. Make top twenty, top twenty. Okay, <laughs> okay well, yeah, we'll to me, the the thing about it is that joy of life. Yeah. There's some things that are a little not so PC these days, but other than that, it's joy of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but in any case, yeah. And there's and there's 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 some stuff there about dancing that is just really worth revisiting. So, thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. May all okay. beings. Thank you, Dean. May, nice may, to see you, Lisa. Yes. Nice you. Thank you so much. Yes. And may may all beings lovely. swiftly, swiftly Beautiful. hear the music and uh, dance their little hearts out. Bye. See you. See you next Bye. Thank you.